doing? Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Rinda. <laughs> We're hiding this approach. Welcome to Rinda's birthday party. This is the real birthday. People have been wishing me happy birthday for yes. several days. And you're seeing this the day after. But I believe that you get a full week of birthday. You should. Especially especially at this Especially this birthday. Especially during your better half of life. Yes. I proudly am 65 years old today. That's amazing. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I still feel like the teenager. You know, it, it wasn't that long ago that 60 something seemed really old to us. I know. And here we are. It doesn't seem old anymore. <laughs> now our friends who are in their 80s and 90s, maybe they're old. No, maybe they're, they're not, not old. old. I mean, so many of them are going strong. And the 100 so. year olds I know are really young. They really uh, are. <laughs> it's amazing. So we've had a delightful day. It's very quite late for us to be able to start a video. We got a lot done today. So we're gonna kind of do a one take wonder here. We're not gonna give you all of the juicy, scientific anything right now. <laughs> you know, for those of you who have YouTube channels, you understand that if you're getting something done in, in, on your homestead, it's very hard to get the time to make the videos about what you're doing. Um, and we didn't film all day. We could have. Oh. Uh, so let's I just. Know, it would have been hard. It would have. Let us go through some of the things we did today. Okay. First of all, I know you're not going to believe this in this Missouri heat, but we have not had air conditioning. And he just put a window air conditioner in tonight. It, it's been and on the list. It feels it, uh, really good. But I, the, the discomfort got higher than priority than some of the other projects finally. Today so. hit the hit 95 Yeah. and uh, it was too much. I said okay. When, when every, every other sentence says oh it's too hot I know it's time to get the air conditioner going. <laughs> uh, now let me tell you the difference between Arizona heat and Missouri heat. I grew up in Arizona. I'm really tired of people telling me oh but Arizona is such a better heat because it's dry heat. First of all, when I lived there, they were in August, they were still ha having 70% humidity because of all the man-made lakes that they put in there and the ponds and the creeks and the everything. So it wasn't exactly dry. Number two, when 125 hits you in the face every time you walk out, the only thing you can do is laugh or cry. We chose to laugh the last time we were there. We were there for my mom's funeral. And we were my, actually staying in a hotel that had pools. So. Yes. And my sister-in-law had kidded her several years earlier saying, don't you die in August. Because <laughs> we knew she was going to be buried in Arizona. Yeah. So it would take, no matter, she was living in New Mexico, but she'd be buried in Arizona, which meant a trip to Arizona for us. She died in August. So my brother and my sister-in-law and us, we, we went to... Dairy Queen, which is a Dairy Queen that we used to go to as That's, teenagers. It's a no-no, it's a no-no. No it was nostalgia. Oh my word, it was still the little tiny one That's that you go excuse. to the window. This was two years ago, okay. It's the same building same. when we were kids. Exactly. Still there. I mean, when you say, do you feel old at 65? Heck no, I am still 16. It was awesome. <laughs> And we went to anyway, the same dairy. I think the same people were serving. <laughs> no, that's not. There is a huge difference between Missouri heat and Arizona heat. I'll take Missouri because, yes, there's humidity. But when I'm walking outside, I can feel a breeze once in a while, and it actually cools your skin. That does not happen in Arizona. Yeah, you feel a breeze, but it burns you. <laughs> so, for me and my house... We'll take Missouri. I've done that. So, anyway, that AC. Was a, that was quite a deviation from what we were going to talk about. <laughs> I know. But it's a reality. I mean, it, but that's one thing we accomplished, Steve. Okay, we made we, butter. We did. In we, our churn. You know, our our son, for her birthday, tried to be thoughtful. He did, he did a great job. He did the thing. He, he did research, and, and he knew we, we drank raw milk. And he researched and found somebody who was selling raw milk 
and made arrangements he, for the guy to deliver he to called us. six different ones in our area before he got one that would deliver to us do you understand what a heartfelt gift that was i called him up and i said that's the best gift i've ever received so today when i looked at it it had like that much cream on the different things so i'm like butter now a, a comment about milk quality yes not sure what he feeds we we didn't get to that question because the other questions we ask we kind of like oh okay he had milks which is not in and of itself bad uh, it's but, fine but the the take the flavor of the milk and some of the things we found in the milk let us know it's not handled as clean well and he poured it, it into it was in a gallon jug that was used from milk from the store and I'm like you know this isn't the kind of milk that we look for we look for extreme cleanliness really good taste we looked um, our farmer in the eye and he's a great guy he is a great guy but he was honest with us and we, but it was cheap enough that we will get some to feed to the it, pigs. It, it's fine for the pigs. It's perfect <laughs> for the pigs. And that sounds terrible, but anyway, we are. We very, made butter with it. We are. There was very, a lot of cream. Very, on it. very. I mean, the gallon beautiful. had like that much cream on the top of it. I mean, it was True. three or four inches of cream. And it was a Jersey cow. So, so okay. So we did AC, cleaned a whole bunch more in the garage. We 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 went to one mill to get feed for our chickens. You're not going to go into that. And we're not going back to that one, but in the process of it, we found another one that wasn't... We found an Amish store. Uh, it, it wasn't on the the internet, but we drove past it and we decided to go there and... Um, that was a good experience. It was a good experience. It's we, just we, a we different... Like, we like what they have. And the, Anyway, yeah. yeah. It, okay. It, it was a better experience. That's all we'll say. <laughs> okay, I'm good. we're going to address two things today that have to do with questions that we have received from our viewers in yesterday's video. And both of them have to do with animals and because it, and how to feed and care for the animals. So the reason we care and feed for our animals correctly is because whatever goes into our animal comes into us. And so it's super important that we know how to take care of these animals. So one of the questions that we got are, how do you feed them correctly uh, on the grass that you're gonna feed them? And how do you get enough of the, the vegetables from your garden to be able to feed them and all of that kind of stuff? You know, the rest of that question indicated this is somebody who had raised other than pigs and she'd raised six pigs right and right but successfully and, and has a lot of experience with other animals as well and it sounds like the concern was less about what to feed them than what to feed them in a profitable way it is it is and absolutely and sometimes it's not profitable Sometimes well, if, we if, do if, it for our health. If we were, the first thing that we're doing is raising our garden, our vegetables, everything that we're raising, and then our animals for our consumption, for our health. So if it costs, you know, it, it's, not, it's not a commercial operation. If, if we have a balance sheet, um, we're paying more for our food, even raising it ourselves, probably. Uh, but that's not a problem because we know where it's coming from. Now, in the case of the feeds, we make certain that non-GMO, organic, it's handled properly, clean all the way. And when it's not, then that's a source we don't use. We look for those sources where it's totally clean. That way we know what's coming to us is good, nutritious, nothing toxic about it so that we can consume the product on, and, and be healthy. On feeding our pigs, we will not accept restaurant scraps, scraps from other people. Which, you know, we, we, we learned this from Tim, the person we oh, were buying the red waffles. Well, I knew that. Anyway. And, and, and we, we knew that, but it was like, maybe it's okay. But his stance 
push this to, to make that decision. No, absolutely not. Yeah, it's going to cost us a little bit more, but we're going to know that the meat is not tainted by something that that pig has eaten. And we have an extra one that we're going to be raising. So if you're in the area and want to buy it from us, you just let us know. So we're going to, we, we will always raise one, raise two and keep one for ourselves and sell one. But you know, for those of you who go to the farmer's markets and you buy your, your food there, if like our farmer's market, a lot of it is sold relatively low price. And, and that's great in one respect, but sometimes it also means that either they don't know how to price it or the way that they're raising it is they're, they're cutting a lot of corners and the quality's not there. And when we say look the farmer in the eye, what that implies is you're asking the questions to know how was this raised? How was it fertilized? Did they spray things on it? From, from prepping the soil to planting to seed to nurturing that plant and harvesting it and presenting it to you, what, what have they done? And if it's all been clean and good, fine. If not, then may not be the best choice. But what you're going to find, maybe without exception, I'm pretty sure without exception, people who have gone to the trouble and expense to produce clean food have to charge you more in order to make it profitable. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, it's a fact. And uh, that's what causes organic, it's part of what causes organic food uh, and products to be cost more because it uh, takes more. the production costs more yep. that it's it's a reality and it's it's unfortunate but when you think of the trouble they have to it if everybody produced clean food all of it would cost the same it wouldn't be cheap um, you know all you have to do is go look at the the fast food places I mean they are what they're serving is low cost stuff lowest price that they can pay so that they can put it on their menu from kefos yes so i mean you, you got to make the choice i mean if you don't if you want to sh eat based on how much you're spending for your food then realize in making that choice what you're doing for the food you're putting in your body and what that can mean for your body that's that's the reality i've said enough about that okay i think we got the point i'm going to go on to the second one the second question was, how are you learning us in, not just us, but like she was referring to Tim, who was, we're buying the red wattle from, how, or anybody else, how in the world do you know how to raise a pig or how to raise chickens or how to do lambs or how to do any of that? Rita has you given me done? permission to answer the question this way, but I'm going to answer the question this way. Well. You're just talkative tonight. Oh, I am. It's your birthday, so I'm not going to make you talk so much. The first chickens that we had, we were on the property where we were living, and we had our motor home there. That's what we were That's living That's what we in. lived in, a motor while, home. While we were getting other things going. And um, with knowing that events well we did have some chickens that we brought with us we brought from our son's backyard who, who were being tortured by the way <laughs> oh i didn't say that publicly yes, you did. well his kids were supposed to take care of them and they didn't always take care of them so I, that's all i'm referring to and they they, they weren't free range they weren't very confined they were a little confined so it, it was it was rough for him so we gave him a lot better situation until, until the they dogs. got Till the dogs broke in and killed the chickens. That wasn't so good. <laughs> but we started learning this about conversation predators. Is going. <laughs> but no, the point the point that I'm making is clueless probably describes <laughs> where we were. And those kinds of experiences woke us up to the possibilities. Well, it, so we have to be ready for predators and we started doing that. And uh, and and I remember going all of a sudden there was an epiphany. One day our son realized it, we realized it, we're like, wait a minute. If these chickens that he has in his backyard are eating the same cheap food that they would get in a factory, what makes them any healthier? Because he had them very confined and we're like, 
Oh, it really matters what you feed your chicken. And that's the way you learn. And that, that's what we learn. But the first batch of meat chickens that we got, we did the Cornish cross because they get big, right? That's what everybody tells you. Uh, and we're in our motor home. It's cold outside. There's really no, we didn't have anything set up to have them outside to keep them as warm as they would need to be at that time of year. So we had them in our motor home on, on, the, the, on the seat. Of the dining room table. Of the dining room table. And um, now, if you home. know anything about Cornish Cross, they, they grow fast and they grow big. Uh, we couldn't keep them there too long and it forced us to make the changes. But the point that I'm making is we really didn't know what we were doing. We went and got the chickens, got a few of the things we thought we needed, found out we needed others, found out we needed to source our feed differently, found out we needed to set them up in a better brooding situation. Uh, it and was, no, and don't, and we raised them all during the winter, and so they were confined in this little concrete area. Oh, we are not Cornish Cross fans at all. That's, an, that's another story. We've had them several times. That, that's and another we won't story. Have them but, again. but the question is, how do you know? Well, I don't think we were ever mean to the animals. We were oh, always good no. to them. We we did our best, and our best kept getting better. Of course as we discovered the mistakes. Uh, is that the best way to go at it? No. We know more now about how to figure it out. There's and I, I, many, many more YouTube uh, opportunities yeah. to learn now than there was then. Oh my word. Uh, that's, we, we weren't aware of know about we YouTube weren't of the, then. Yeah, we didn't know about we it. Well, and we didn't have internet, so we wouldn't yeah. have got it. Yeah. But the first time I'm looking it up for the second, you know, when we were in Oregon, it was like Justin Rhodes came up, Abundant Permaculture. And, uh, and that's where I started learning about all these different things. Now, today, with these new chickens that we got, I'm like, it's been too long. So I went and looked up Lisa Steele. And, it, and she's, you know, Fresh Eggs Daily is the book that she's written and that's her channel. And she has all this stuff and she uses herbs. And so that's the way we learn. But we were prepared. We had everything we needed other than sourcing the feed. Which, this time? Yeah, this yeah. time. And you know, that, that was a lot easier for us to do. So, for the so we, we were prepared. But I, I guess what we're saying is in answer to the question, how do you know? Well, figure out which animals fit for you in your situation. Do some research, look around. There's a lot of advice, probably all over, you know, 10 people, 10 opinions, but look at it all and come make your own conclusions about it, but learn from what you're seeing on what's possible and adapt it to you. So, you know, to the question of how do you know, you learn that way, but at some point, you make the leap. You say, okay, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to acquire the animal. And, and seriously, that's what we're doing with the pigs. We had pigs before. And from what we've learned since then is a lot of what we and they were doing with the pigs wasn't the best for the pigs, wasn't as safe for the pigs, wasn't as healthy for the pigs. And I have to admit, when, when we got them back from the processor, we didn't like the flavor, we didn't like the texture, it just wasn't wasn't good meat and these, the second one was yeah. second group that we did yeah. was really good yeah but we know we're going to get on and watch lumna acres because he really took his pigs from the beginning to the end homesteady he did a lot of pigs art and Bree, they did their pigs so we go on and watch the ones that we know are doing them and and who, who ended up with meat that they liked yeah that was good and so yeah that's a good example to follow and we know we're doing them in paddocks, then we're moving the paddock as they go and do the, <coughs> the field. Uh, we, we're not using Premier One, we're not using electric fencing. Yeah, you know, we've watched a lot <coughs> about electric fences and... For one thing, we can't afford it. Well, you know, e even if we could, in regards to pigs... I wouldn't um, do it. They run right through it. Yeah, pig, pigs are pigs. You, you need something that can hold them in. It, it's, it's just that simple. So. Um, so we will learn. I really want to get a donkey, but I'm afraid to. But I don't need a donkey, but I want a donkey. And 
because of the people who we bought the land from, they still have some of their horses out in here. That's easy. Horses are easy. Cows are easy. You just put them out and they go. We just can't afford them yet. Yeah. Um, those are super easy. I mean, cows are just... Now, one of the questions on the, the pick care, you know, you know, I think we've covered our opinion, our approach to the costs and you know, how do you care for them. But what do you do about the processing? How are you going to get a process so that you're not having the nitrate issue and so on and so forth? Well, we've got, you know, from the time we acquire the pig until pigs, until it's time to have them processed, we, we have months. There are several processors locally, and we're going to start investigating each of them, talking to people who uh, have used them, but also talking to them until we, we find That one. said, our very first ones where we did the pigs, we just chose one, and it wasn't until after we realized we didn't like them at all um, that everybody said, oh my word, you didn't go to that processor, did you? We're like, ooh, guess we should ask. Ask around. <laughs> I mean, and, and we've done that a little and bit. So we're aware of some, we, but this area is loaded with processors. And, and the so. people who did the red wattles, they go to a USDA. They do not use nitrates. Um, so, you know, we'll probably do ours through there. Yeah, that's probably the one we'll end up with. But it's a matter of finding people who are near you and find out who they're using. In this case, you know, we're sourcing our pigs from somewhere that we're very confident in. Using his processor really makes a lot of sense. So well, it's probably a great place When to we start. did it in Oregon, we actually bought, the people we bought it from processed their own. So we went out to their home and stood there with them as they made every cut and she said do you want this cut do you want this cut do you want this cut and then we were right there as they were doing the curing and so we saw what they were using and what they were not using yeah, that so, was a great opportunity to do that. that that was a wonderful thing so we knew how clean it was we knew the whole situation so um so you just learn every day in homesteading is a learning experience i'm just going to give you one more really quick thing can i insert one thing yeah don't take things for granted. Ask the questions. Be sure you have an answer you're comfortable with. Don't assume it's going to be the way you think it's going to be. Yeah. That, that's good advice, yeah. right? So kind of the definition for homesteading is you make it work. You figure it out. The core of the problem is the seed of the solution. Absolutely. I mean, and that, so you know, that's, today, that's permaculture principles, but really... That, he must repeat that like once, three, four times a week. Well, we have a, we have a, a lot, a lot of, problems. of problems. <laughs> so today, when he needed a big board to put on top to cover the area where the air conditioner wasn't going this to This was an unplanned project, so we didn't have materials for this. He comes out and he goes, I need an 18 We've by 18 board. I've got like, no boards left. I said, well, remember, I said I wanted the cupboards taken off on a little barn. I just want the doors taken off so that I can just have shelves take off a door and use it. And he goes, and it worked perfect. It was great. There were two <laughs> doors. I got it all out of that. So. Yeah. And now I've got four more on my side that I yeah. can do. We, go. And plus so I have we each have our own barn, I know. We're really spoiled. It's great. My barn's bigger than hers. Yes, it is. And I play in yours a lot. Yeah, <laughs> well, the point of animals is you raise them by feeding them what you want to eat yourself. So you make sure that the food that they get is not chemicals, not pesticides, not um, altered with GMOs, and that it is something that you know that by putting it in them, it's going to help your body. And, and animals are important. They deserve to be treated right. They deserve to be safe. They deserve to be fed right. They deserve to have the, the climatic conditions fit for them. Now, with it being so hot right now, a little bit of a challenge. So we're we're doing what we can we to keep shade We may be bringing our them. babies inside, even yeah. though they're a little stinky. We need to make sure they're safe. Oh, that said, we told you yesterday we would tell you what we were doing on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we are going to the Elderberry Workshop here in Missouri. 
where we are going to learn how to grow elderberries and how to do commercially. it commercially and how to do it as a business. Something we signed up for uh, a while ago and we're very excited. I'm sure they will not let us film it because it was expensive to, to be able to go. Actually, it was a pretty reasonable It was very workshop. reasonable, yeah, for what we're getting. And um, so that's where we're going to be on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So by Saturday night, we're going to know a lot more about <laughs> elder, elderberries and how to grow them properly in Missouri so that they can be processed commercially. Right. And um, we will be coming home each night, but I think while we're gone, babies are going to be in here. Yeah, yeah it'll so. keep them safer, be better control of the temperature because it's with the getting as warm as it is, it's it's a little bit above where they should be. So they're just kind of reacting to it. So <laughs> it, I, it, it's stressing them. It's not as healthy yeah. for them. And I really feel for the hens, but I don't know what else to do for them. I mean, it's anywhere we put them, it's hot right now. I know. We just need to move them into the shade of the tree. We moved them today for the first time. We kind of well. kept them, and the second we moved they, they them, were, they weren't sure what to do though. I wasn't I was, sure. I didn't even see any movement. As them. I was, they were like they stood at the back until it got up to them, and they were like, "What's he doing?" <laughs> and then they just started eating that grass. And they saw they saw the fresh grass, and they're like, "Ooh, look at this fresh grass!" <laughs> All right. Well, we are, we want to welcome our new subscribers that came over from Homesteady's shout out. Thank you so much, Austin. Hey, and, and anyone who came without Austin's. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, if you have not subscribed to our newsletter, go to hardinessapproach.com and you will get a newsletter on Friday mornings, which means I need to get to it tomorrow. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get. And for those of you homesteaders, who have who've been here just a short while and haven't heard about the other channel that I do five days a week called Regenerate, Don't Degenerate, and you think you don't need some exercise, come on over and exercise with, I do it live, you don't have to be there live, you can see it later, I do it in the mornings, but we all need to exercise. I know as homesteaders we exercise, I get it, but you don't you use all of your muscles, you don't use all of your joints, every now and then, you're doing something homesteading wise that calls on muscles and joints you haven't been using and you typically are going to hurt yourself and strain yourself if you haven't been doing workouts to keep yourself up and going and that's what it's all about. Plus, all of us who are losing it, who are degenerating <laughs> because we aren't taking care We're of it. We're losing it? it use you it don't mean or it lose it. No, no. <laughs> muscles. Muscles and bones. You want to build them up. Hey, I, that, made, that's what it's I all made about. about three minutes of your exercise today watching i i got in there late i exercised two of the exercises before my phone rang it was birthday wishes all day long anyway <laughs> come over to regenerate don't degenerate in youtube uh there's a link to it from our website hardinessapproach.com fitness if you just find the, the page in there you can link to it all right place. we'll give you some more i'd videos. enjoy having you part of it it'd be great <laughs> I'm going to shut up now. It's my birthday, Anna. <laughs> it's your birthday. You, you can Bye, finish. guys. Love ya.